Hello everyone, how are you? Good morning. I'm Kelsey Michaud, Certified Health and Life Coach, and I help people to gain control of emotional eating so that they can feel confident in their body and the choices that they make. So today, we're talking about how shame affects your eating habits. So, I'm gonna dive right in because eating certain foods can become a pattern really fast, especially around um, when we feel um, feelings of shame sometimes. And then there's anxiety involved and the anxiety of maybe being found out that we're eating certain foods that maybe we're tr we've been trying to hide. Do you ever find yourself hiding foods from your family members or your friends or just trying to eat when they're not around maybe? So this, this becomes a habit, okay? So this is a habit that can go on for many years, unfortunately. And it's not because we like doing that. It's not, we don't like the experience of that and, you know, eating that way, but because it actually lets ourselves, you know, we're, we're like fooling ourselves into believing that we haven't actually eaten anything or, or, or that we haven't actually eaten anything that we considered that was forbidden or that we shouldn't be eating. And these eating habits become followed by patterns of anxiety because you're just afraid that someone's going to end up finding out that you're eating this way. So what's most important to do is to become really aware, okay? You wanna become aware of the ways that shame is playing into your own experience, which is the very first step um, you know, to learning to be able to eat, um, you know, and give yourself more compassion, okay? So I have three tips for you that I want to share for you um, that can help you um, bring more awareness to when you're eating. So the first one is to try to become more aware of those repeating thoughts that are in your head, you know, that, that um, those voices that go on in your head. They, they're in your mind and they're, they're there and they're just, you know, they're saying all these things that are probably driving you crazy and sometimes they're not so nice, right? So a lot of times it's just, it's self-doubt. Those voices will give you self-doubt and like, it's like you're thinking that you're unlovable, um, you're, you're hopeless, you're, you're helpless and maybe that you're not good enough and maybe you're thinking, well, I'm, I'm basically alone or I, I don't belong anywhere. You know, these are all feelings that you want to become more aware of because remember, none of it is true. All of that negative self-talk is just stuff that's made up in your head. So you wanna become aware when that happens and you wanna be able to reframe that and turn it positive. No, I, I am good, I, I am lovable, I love myself, I am good enough, I am enough. Okay, these are the things that we want to try to switch, you know, switch it around, um, turn, it, turn it around on yourself and get rid of those negative thoughts. But well, first of all, you have to become aware of when they're happening, okay? And two, I want you to learn to identify those different manifestations of shame. So sometimes shame will show up as, you know, that, that inner self-critic, kind of like that self-talk. You know that self-talk Goes, it goes on and on sometimes. And a lot of times we're telling ourselves that we're never good enough, okay? And three, be more mindful of shame that is actually when it's showing up in your body. So think about your body language, okay? Um, think about like your eyes, you, you know, turn your eyes downward maybe, is your head lowered, um, like even your posture, you know, all of these are natural expressions of shame. So how can we actually, you know, work with this shame and become uh, much more resilient to it? Well, the very first step is to keep from, keep that shame from showing up um, to begin with. So keep it from having its own voice, all right? So that means that like, there's no secrets, there's no silence, there's no judgment, okay? So by breaking that silence, you're actually, you're actually challenging your thoughts about eating, which is really, really an important part of this process. Hi, Tara, how are you? Thanks for coming on bright and early with me this morning. And the second step is to focus on um, just all of our, like our common humanity. We're all humans, right? And we're not perfect. And as human beings, we are, we're born 
I'm sorry, my connection keeps going in and out this morning, but, um, but as humans, you know we're born wanting to feel loved, right? It's just a natural thing that we gravitate to. We actually need each other to survive as humans. And you know, we look for approval. We want to feel. Um, we, we don't want to feel that social shame, right? And we we want to fit in. So the thing is, like, we understand that we all we all struggle at from time to time, and we all have the same feelings sometimes and the same fears. And we need to be able to um, connect with them because we're all we're all human. Okay. It's important to remember that you're not alone in this. A lot of times you feel like you're alone, but you have to remember that you're not, and you can always reach out to someone or even talk to somebody who's going through the same thing so that you can understand each other and work each other through it. And the third step is allowing yourself to be uncomfortable. You know what? We don't want to feel our feelings. We push them away because they're uncomfortable a lot of the times. We don't want to feel them, but it's okay. You need to allow yourself to be uncomfortable. A lot of times it takes a courage from yourself to be able to expose yourself to those stories that you've been maybe hiding for so long. You've been keeping them pushed down because, because it's much easier to hide them, right? So mindfulness actually will address each um, like moment to moment experience for you with curiosity and openness and just kindness. So no matter if there's like negative beliefs or um, what a however shameful experience that you may have felt. So you want to think about bringing your, your kindness, okay, to, to the table, bring, you know, talk, be compassionate to yourself, your, in the whole situation, all right? Stop with that negative self-talk and ease up on that self-criticism and by consciously breathing and slowing down, you can actually relax into those tense areas, which is actually gonna help you to increase your tolerance for some of those, I'm sorry, my connection still keeps, it's all wacky today, but um, it's going to help you increase that tolerance for some of those painful emotions you're going to feel uh, by letting them out. And last but not least, you can show yourself kindness by talking to yourself in a way that you would talk to a loved one. You know, think of yourself that way. You have to think, you have to love yourself, okay? It's important to love yourself. So talk to yourself as if you were talking to a loved one. Or think about how you would respond to a friend if they were going through the same situation. How would you talk to them? How would you talk them through it? Okay, so be, be, a, be a supporter for your own self. You know, be compassionate to yourself can help you to find that inner peace inside of you. So I hope with my crazy connection today that that was helpful for you. And remember, um, if you think someone else might find this helpful, you know, share it out and um, and let them know. And if you have any questions as, as well, please feel free to pop it in the comments for me. I would love to um, answer your questions and chat with you. And if there's no questions right now, I'm gonna hop off. But I hope you have a very beautiful day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.